Hari Om. We will do a little Nama Sankirtanam. <clears throat> Achutam Keshavam Ramana Rayanam Krishna Damodaram Vasudevam Harim Sridharam Madhavam Gopika Vallabham Janaki Nayakam Ramachandram Bhaje Achutam Keshavam Satyabhamadhavam Madhavam Shridharam Radhika Radhitam Indira Mandiram Chetasa Sundaram Devaki Nandanam Nandajam Sandhade Vishnave Jishnave Shankine Chakrine Rukmini Ragini Janaki Janaye Vallavi Vallabha Yarchita Yatmane Kamsa Vidvamsine Vamsine Te Namaha Krishna Govindahe Ramana Rayanam Shri Pate Vasudevarchita Shri Nidhe Achyuta Nandahe Madhava Dokshaja Dwaraka Nayaka Draupadi Rakshaka Achyutam Keshavam Ramana Rayanam Krishna Damodaram Vasudevam Harim Sridharam Madhavam Gopika Vallabham Janaki Nayakam Ramachandram Bhaje Achyutam Keshavam Satyabhamadhavam Madhavam Sridharam Radhika Radhitam Indira Mandiram Chetasa Sundaram Devaki Nandanam Nandajam Sandade Vishnave Jishnave Shankine Chakrine Mini Ragini Janaki Janaye Vallabhi Vallabha Yarchita Yatmane 
शशिवर्णम चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वदन ध्यानोपात वागीशाद्यामन सह सर्वाताक्रमे यम नृतकृत्या स्यु तम नमा गजानन वक्रतुंड महाकाय कोटिसूर्य सभ निर्विघ्न कुर मे दर्वकु सर्वदा सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामिणे विद्यारंभम क्या सिद्धिर्भवतु मे सदा गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम दी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर व्यास वसीन शक्ते पौत्रमकमश पराशरात्मज वंदे शुकता तपो निधि व्यासा विष्णु व्यासूपाय विष्णवे नमो वै ब्रह्म निद वासीय नमो नम वसुदेव सुत कंसचाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय चंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदय नमो नम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ब्रह्मानंद परम सुखद कवल ज्ञानमूर्ति द्वंद्वातीत गगन सदृश तत्वस्यालक्ष्यम एकम विमलमचल सर्वधी साक्षी भूत भावातीत त्रिगुणरहित 
सद्गुर तम नमा सद्गु तम नमा ओं पार्थाय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणे न स्वयं व्यासे न ग्रतिता पुराण मुनि मध्य महाभारत अद्वैता मृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी अंबत्वासंदा भगवदीते भवद्वेशिनी नमोस्तु ते व्यास विशाल बुद्धे पुल्लारविंदात पत्र नेत्रया भारत तैल पूर्ण प्रज्वालि ज्ञानमय प्रदीप प्रपन्न पारिजाताय स्त्रोत्र वेत्रकपाणे ज्ञान मुद्रा कृष्णा गीतादुहे नम सर्वोपनिषद गाव दोग्धा गोपाल नंदन पार्थो वत्सुधीर्भोक्ता दुग्ध गीतामृत महत वसुदेवसुत देव कंसचाणूरमर्दन देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु भीष्मद्रोणतटा जयद्रतजला गांधारनीलोपला शल्यग्राहवती कृपेण वहनी कर्णेन वेलाकुला अश्वत्थाम विकर्ण घोरमकरा दुर्योधना वर्ति सोतीर्ण कलु पांडवैरण नदी कैवर्तक केशव पाराशर्यवच सरोज ममल गीतागंधोत्कट नाख्यानकसर हरिकता संबोधना बोधित लोके सज्जन षटदर पेपीयम मुदा भूयाद्भारत पंकज कलिमल प्रध्वंसी न श्रेयसे मूकंकोति वाचाल पंगु लंघयते गिरी यत्पा तमह वंदे परमानंदमाधव यं ब्रह्मा वरुणेन्द्र रुद्रमरुत स्तुन्वती दिव्य स्तव वेद सांगपद्रमोपनिषद गायती यं साम ध्यानावस्थित तदेन मनसा पश्यती यं योगि न विदुस्सुरा सुरगणा देवाय तस्म नम देवाय तस्म नम सर्वधर्मान परत्यज मेक शरण व्रज अहम तापेभ्य मोक्षयिष्या माशु समस्त जनकल्याण निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्म देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर यधिमात्रेण सर्वे शिष्या सेवका कर्म क्षेत्र प्रवर्तंते चिन्मय तम नमाम्यहम चिन्मय तम नमाम्यहम हरि ओम एवरीबॉडी थैंक्स फॉर ट्यूनिंग इन टुडे i appreciate all the positive comments on the analysis in the last two lectures what i am going to do in the first few minutes 
because of the Memorial Day weekend and so on, some of you might have missed it. We started the Gnana Yagna with our topic on the essence of Bhagavad Gita. Both the lectures are on the SV Temple website. And if you have missed it for any reason, you can go ahead and view them. What we have done so far is we have looked at the glory of Bhagavad Gita. We looked at it as a, from the standpoint of Gita as a Upanishad, Yoga Shastra. We looked at it as a Dharma Shastra, Pramana Grantha, Adhyatma Grantha, and its place in Prasthana Trayi. We looked at the background of Mahabharata war as an inner war within ourselves. And we looked at Gita as a Margadarshaka Grantha, a book of guidance as to how to face situations in life. We had looked at the Upakrama Shloka 2-7, Karpanya Dosho Hihata Swabhava, how Arjuna accepted he had a problem and surrendered completely and unconditionally. And when he told Bhagavan Krishna in 18-73, Karishye Vachanam Tava, I shall do as you say. We understood in the last class how Arjuna approached Bhagavan as a teacher, how Bhagavan Krishna's teaching Arjuna, that is all of us through him, as to how to think. We learned that we might do a lot of scenario planning, but fear of failure creates nervousness in all of us. We learned how Bhagavad Gita teaches us how to think in a structured way. Bhagavan Krishna gave him a holistic view of why he should not be grieving. I also told you how some Acharyas view 2-11, where the teaching begins with Ashocha Nanvashocha Stvam, culminating in Sarvadharman Parityajya 18-66 as the Upakrama Upasamhara Shloka from a teaching standpoint. Bhagavan Krishna gave him a lesson in grief management to address his grief, shoka, arising from delusion, moha. And as a byproduct of those, you have bhaya, fear. First, Bhagavan gave him the knowledge from a adhyatmika drishti, from the highest standpoint. He talked about Atma Jnana. He talked about Tattva Jnana. Then we went through a series of shlokas from 2-13, 16, 18, 20th, 23rd, from an Adhyatmika Drushti, Nitya Anitya Viveka Drushti. And it also encompassed a lot of Atma Lakshanas the pointers on Atma. Then he told him, hey Arjuna, even if you consider as a Jeeva, no need to grieve. That was 2-22. Then we saw from a dharmika drishti, from a dharma standpoint, he gave him a lesson. We saw shlokas 2-31 and 32. From a worldly standpoint, he gave him from a laukika drushti how people will view him if he runs away from the battlefield as a coward. We looked at Atma Gnana or Avidya Nivritti as the main theme of Bhagavad Gita, which is the Apurvata, the uniqueness of Bhagavad Gita. We talked a little bit about the ladder of fall the two important shlokas for Indriya Nigraha 2-62, 2-63. Indriya Nigraha and Mano Nigraha, control of mind and senses. We saw that how we need to recover quickly if we ever fall on our journey. The solution I mentioned was in Bhajagovindam. 
we touched upon the palam with atma gnana that 2-71 the individual from mamata to samata to purnata knowing that this self knowledge yad gnatva there is no incompleteness anymore there is nothing else need to be known now before we start today's lecture i want to give you a brief introduction on karma siddhanta in vedanta what is karma you hear this even westerners saying karma the word karma means action each individual reaps the fruits of his or her action either performed in this life or in the past lives there is no deed small or great good or bad that can be without an effect this is essence of karma siddhanta karma is not a fate driven concept destiny driven once we understand how our vasanas drive our actions we may hastily conclude that we are helpless victims of our past vasanas etc etc although we have come to this world to enjoy or suffer because of our past karmas called prarabdha we still have the freedom called self effort purushartha so there are these karmas can be categorized under five broad categories kamya karmas desire prompted actions nitya karmas daily obligatory duties kartavya karma that are duties enjoined by others samskara karma rituals performed for purification i'll take you each one through a little more detail today nishiddha karmas or prohibited actions which are a no no now kamya karmas or actions performed by a particular to fulfill a particular desire to get a particular result for example you have heard in the puranas jyotishtoma yaga was conducted to attain heaven putra kamesti yaga was conceived uh, was used to conceive children you heard that in ramayan nitya karmas these are obligatory duties prescribed by the vedas depending on the stage of life you are in for example gayatri japa is prescribed for a student to be done every single day these are duties meant to bring in discipline into our life to discipline the mind kartavya karmas these are actions prescribed by others such as parents teachers a government place of our employment all these are you have to fulfill your obligatory duties called kartavya karma then you have samskara karmas these are karmas performed as purificatory act for example when the child is born graduation ceremony upanayanam marriage ceremony all these are samskara vidhi these rituals gives us a sense of new beginning to fulfill and prayasthita karmas also fall under this category of samskara karma nishiddha karma these are prohibited actions that have to be avoided at all costs so the main goal of karma kanda portion of the vedas that points out to the main goal is chitta shuddhi the purification of mind and single pointedness called chitta ekagrata attained through the upasana portions of the vedas so with purity comes clarity of knowledge so this is the main underlying theme of karma siddhanta so there are four types of purusharthas dharma to do righteous action artha acquisition of wealth or any other worldly possession kama is fulfillment 
and enjoyment of desires. Moksha is the highest goal of human existence called liberation from this cycle of births and deaths. If you notice, there is artha and kama or in between dharma and moksha. As long as we are in those confinements, we are good. So the, then these result, they fall under three categories, under broad categories of punya karma, when you do meritorious or dharmic action, which leads to good results called punya. Then there are papa karmas, wrong or adharmic actions lead to bad results. Negative karma. Mishrita karma, a mixture of good and bad having mixed results. Now, karmas are mainly performed by three of our instrument equipment. Kaika karma through body, vachika karma through speech, manasika karma through mind. When we say kayena vacha manasendriya irva, this is what we are talking about. So the law of karma, as you notice, is very logical. It is based on the theory of cause and of effect. We are usually ignorant of our actions done in our past lives that has created our present destiny. The play of the cause and effect can only take place in the medium of time. First, there must be a cause followed by an effect. Therefore, the past is the cause and the present is the effect. So the present itself becomes the cause with reference to the future. Since we exist in the present, we are not only the effect of our past, which is the prarabdha karma, but we are also the architects of our own future. Now, karmas by mind. At the thought level, we have noble thoughts about bhakti or devotion, vairagya. These are all punya karmas at the mental level. Disrespecting scripture, verbal abuse of the Lord are all examples of papa karmas at the mental level. Karmas by speech. They are regularly reciting scriptures, chanting mantras, hymns, singing devotional songs, bhajans. They are all punya karmas by speech. Disrespecting scriptures, verbal abuse of the Lord are all papa karmas at the speech level. Karmas by body is like bathing in holy waters, prostrating to the guru, lord, saintly people, troubling others while doing good deed. Misappropriation, these are all papa karmas. Misappropriation of wealth for a sat karma, etc. So we looked at already the cause of karma, the law of karma is a very logical base theory. The play of the cause and effect happens in the medium of time. We looked at how cause is always followed by an effect. So whatever we have done in the past is the cause and the present is the effect. Now, getting into the karma, we had briefly touched upon 2-47 in the previous lecture, where we looked at how to divinize our actions from karma to karma yoga. You have a choice in action, not the result. We looked at 5-7, a five point plan, and said that how to work in this world without getting affected by sorrow. Kurvan apina lipyate. We analyzed how a three-point plan in turning karma to karma yoga from Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi's Upadesha Sara. How to divinize our actions 
from karma to karma yoga. That is, kartavya karmas must be done, dedicated to the Lord. Arpita buddhi. You perform as worship of the Lord while doing your action with a dasya buddhi and all karma pala to be accepted as prasada buddhi. So we also learned, we recognize the Lord as karma dhyaksha while working and recognize him as karma pala data while receiving the result, good or bad. Then we looked at 2-48, samatvam yoga ujjate. You face success with humility, failure with dignity. This equipoise in action and its result is the karma yoga. So what I have done so far is to give you some highlights from the last two lectures so that we can build on that thought structure. Okay? Now, we looked at 2-47 and we'll start from there today's lecture. Karman yevadika raste maapaleshu kadachana Ma karma pala he turbuhu, ma te sangotsva karmani. You know, there are four ways to look at this shloka. One, you have a choice of action. Number two, your choice is doing action and not the result. Number three, do not get attached to inaction. Alasya, or laziness is a no-no. Do not get attached to the result. That is the fourth way to look at. Then somebody may ask, what are the motivating factors to do actions? I have listed about six of them. One, the joy of doing an action. The joy of what must be done. The joy of doing what is in the present. You know, you hear the power of now and all that. The joy of completing the action well and with full effort. There is joy in doing good for all. Ultimately, the joy of improving oneself, that self-development in such actions. This shloka 2-47, you can also look at it as a secret of happiness. We do all karmas or actions for what? For the sake of happiness. But if you analyze it and look at it, the happiness is always in the future. Do we want to be happy now or do we want to be happy in the future? We all live in a society of instant gratification. We say, I want happiness now. In life, if you analyze, we are either preparing to be happy or we are pretending to be happy. The result of any karma is only in the future. And future, we currently know from our situation, is always uncertain. Even if we get the desired result, we know it is temporary and it is time bound. Then again, back to square one. So the beauty of karma is that you can only do actions in the present. So perform the karma in the present. To, in order to do that, what you have to do? You have to discover happiness in performing that action. That is the secret of happiness. Arjuna Vuvacha. Stita pragnasya ka bhasha samadhistasya keshava stita dhi kim prabhasheta kimasita vrajeta kim stita dhi and 
samadhistaha. You know, we are born ignorant. And then ignorance about our true nature. That goes away by shravanam. Sthitadhihi. Then we have sthitadhihi. Then we have to do mananam. Until our doubts are removed. You reflect on what you have heard. And then samadhistaha. You abide with no ignorance, no doubts, and firmly rooted in that self-knowledge. We also looked at in the last class, Yogaha Karmasu Kaushalam 2-50. Atma Santushti, how the Stita Pragna behaves in this world, 2-55 onwards from his nishkamata, from mamata to samata to purnata, anasakti, total dispassion, indriya sayama from 2-58 onwards. One thing you might have noticed in transition, Bhagavan gave him the highest knowledge. Arjuna hated the thought of war at that moment and called it Ghora Karma. He gave him the path of knowledge that led to Arjuna's question, is path of action better? Why are you making me do this karma, Bhagavan? The standard, why me, question. Is Jnana Yoga better or Karma Yoga better? The path of karma and Jnana are mutually exclusive. Karma is a sahakari sadhana from for jnana marga. You need purifying selfless actions that gives us chitta shuddhi, which prepares us for the path of inquiry, vichara. You know, first you have to do vichara. You learn to reflect. Then you have to do achara, practice, and then you do prachara. Propagation, otherwise it becomes durachara. So once whose mind is purified, subtle enough, who has acquired the qualifications of sadhana, chatushtaya, sampanna, who has got viveka, vairagya, samadhi, shatka, sampatti, mumukshutvam, can go directly to the path of knowledge. A state of inaction in, karma, in this engagement is impossible. Bhagavad Gita says in 3-5, nahi kaschit api. Jatutishtatya karma krit karyate hyavashat karma sarva prakriti jair gunaihi. To do or not to do is not a choice that the man has. The choice is in the type of action and the kind of attitude with which we do action. Right action with right attitude prepares you, prepares us for the knowledge. So in 3-8, Bhagavan says, Niyatam kuru karmatvam karmajyayo hya karmanaha sharira yatra pichate na prasidyeda karmanaha Our Pooja Gurudev used to call this the yagna spirit. Arpita buddhi. Yagna spirit is that cooperative endeavor wherein individuals, a group of individuals, come together, sinking their personal differences, rising above selfishness, works for a bigger cause. If you look at Hanumanji, his potential was dormant as long as he worked for Sugriva. Once he started to work for Bhagavan, his potential was limitless. 
performing action in the yagna spirit is renunciation or tyaga kind of like coconut tree what it does it takes water from the ground sweetens it up keeps it in its head and readily gives up to a traveler or a passer by to quench his or her thirst similarly our action should be for the welfare of all the cosmic wheel of cooperative actions that are being narrated in the next two shlokas how all living creatures are born out of food annad bhavanti bhutani parjanyat anna sambhavah yagnad bhavati parjanyah yagna karma samudbhavah karm brahmodbhavam vidhi brahmaksara samudbhavam tasmat sarvagatam brahma nityam yagne pratishtitam all living creatures are born out of food rains come as a result of the yagna and through human actions that's our delivery system for the jeevas here the wheel of action is connected with and includes the supreme yasmat marati reve syat आत्मतृप्तश्च मानवः आत्मन येवच संतुष्टः तस्य कार्यं न विद्यते इन 3.17 अगेन ही रिमाइंड्स हिम दैट द मैन हु इज रियलाइज्ड एंड रिजॉइसेस इन द सेल्फ हु इज कंटेंट देयर इज नथिंग मोर फॉर हिम टू बी डन नाउ in 3-20 he gives janaka maharaj's example for leader ta janaka dayah lok sangrah me vapi sampashyan kartum arhasi यदाचरति श्रेष्ठ तत्तरो जन सयत्माण कुरते लोकस्तनुवर्त थ्री डैश ट्वेंटी वन यु नो वन मैन सेड बिफोर मैरेज आई हेड थ्री थियरीज एज टू हाउ टू ब्रिंग अप चिल्ड्रन द वॉज बिफोर मैरेज now after marriage he says i have three children and no theories and most of the parent, parents in the audience i bet they can endorse that now let us take a look at how bhagavad gita says what bhagavad gita says about leadership attributes what as a lead, good leader do first be very clear about the goals the welfare of all that is what bhagavad gita is saying loka sangraha have you noticed everybody wants to be a leader nobody wants to be a follower if the leadership is confused if the leadership is perverted crooked then it becomes like andhe naiva niyamana yatandha blind leading the blind be established in karma yoga sakta karbanya vidvamsah yata kurvanti bharat kuryad vidvams tata saktah chikirshu loka sangraham 3-25 be established in karma yoga to lead by example yad yadacharati shreshtah that is the best way to guide others a leader must be detached patient enthusiastic dynamic and inspiring but the key motive 
motivation must be welfare of all. Gandhi ji had a very interesting quote. A good leader is judged by the number of leaders that he creates, not by the number of followers. Na buddhi bedam janayet Agnanam karma sanginam joshayet sarva karmani vidvanyukta samacharan. A leader, what are the goals of an ordinary leader? All they want is fame, name, power, wealth. They are, cons they are the, considered the measure of success. But as Gandhiji said, a good leader is judged by the number of leaders he creates. A leader should not have a holier than thou attitude or Mr. Know it all attitude. He should have good interpersonal skills. A very important attitude is that a good leader should never micromanage. He should not divide and rule. A good leader empowers, guides, leads, not, never dictates. It is not my way or highway. That never works. A collaborative approach to problem solving. A collaborative approach to problem solving always works. A good leader develops other leaders. There is no insecurity for them. He wants other to come up as well, grow alongside, kind of live and let live attitude. Mayi sarvani karbani sanyasyad yatma chetasa nirashir nirma mo bhutva yudhyasva vigata jvaraha. This is the law of conservation. What happens in our day-to-day -day living? Most of our energy is drained by two things. One, regrets of the past, anxieties of the future. So what do we do? We forget and we have agitations in the present. We must plug these two leakages. Even if your duty is boring, mundane, tough. Bhagavad Gita says it is better to do one's duty, even though it does not appear glamorous. Shreyan Swadharmo Vigunaha Paradharma Tvanushtitat Swadharme Nidhanam Shreyaha Paradharmo Bhayavaha. Then we move on to the most important chapter, the fourth chapter. Karmanya karma yaf pashet karmanicha karmaya sabuddhiman manushyeshu sayukta krutsna karma krita. In this shloka, Bhagavan Krishna gives us the way to do karma in this world. You do actions without getting tainted, like Padma Patra Mivambasa, like that lotus flower that lives in, in the midst of filth, does not get affected by it. This is the essence of karma yoga. Our scriptures are saying that we are essentially divine, having a human experience. Our famous Kannada poet, Saint Sri Purandara Dasaru, always said, Alliruvudu nammane, illi bandiruve summane. So our divinity is veiled by our thoughts. There are three types of thought textures. Tamas, inactivity. Rajas is activity-based thoughts. Sattva is unactivity. Tamas is the quality of the mind of total inactivity. T 
typically we compare that to a motionless fan an idler who wastes time in laziness sleep alasya rajas signifies a fan in motion a passionate youth bristling with activity is an example sattva sattvic guna may superficially seem as inactivity but in reality it is the quality of maximum activity it may be compared to a fan revolving at such tremendous speed that the motion is not perceptible to the naked eye धूमे नाव्रियते वहनि यथा दर्शो मले नच यथोल भेदा वृतो गर्भः तथा ते नेद मावृतम इन 3-38 भगवान सेस हाउ द सत्व रजस तमो गुण इज वेल्ड सत्व इज द सटलेस्ट ऑफ द थ्री गुणस it is best suited for contemplation on the higher when the mind is filled with qualities like equanimity serenity creative poise all these are sattvic qualities the sattvic desire in that shloka that i chanted is like uh, you know a veil like the smoke covering the self even a passing breeze can remove the smoke rajasik person is agitated stormy ambitious riddled with overpowering desires it veils the self like dust on the mirror in this case a little bit of effort karma is needed a little bit of elbow grease and karma scrubbing the mind to get rid of the desires tamas tamas is filled with inertia carelessness no constancy of purpose the tamasic desire is like a fetus in the womb it cannot be easily removed without effort just like a fetus has to evolve to a fully grown baby to emerge out of the womb this tamasic karma has to do its gestation this example is just like in a television the most important component is the crt tube cathode ray tube so what i call this as as the srt tube because of that it projects the world outside so chapter 3 in bhagavad gita is a very important chapter many concepts on action inaction right action right attitude in action freedom in action how does a man of realization act in this world nature prompted action desire prompted action sinful action how to overcome wrong tendencies of actions you know we already saw how bhagwan glorified the atma gnana how we saw that he called it rahasyam as guhya tamam in the 15th chapter i outlined that in the last lecture bhakto sime saka jeti rahasyam etad uttamam now let us jump to the ninth chapter little bit 9-2 raja vidya raja guhyam pavitram idam uttamam pratyakshavagamam dharmyam susukam kartum avyayam in this ninth chapter bhagwan glorifies the atma gnana again that has eight feathers number 1 राजविद्या राजानाम विद्या 
it is the king of all knowledge raja guhyam it is the knowledge that is the royal secret pavitram pavayati iti pavitram it is the holiest uttamam it is the best number 5 pratyaksha avagamam it is available for experience it is anubhava dharmyam it is the shastra on the side of dharma kartum susukham it is easily available avyayam once you get it there is no going back it is a point of no return our pujya gurudev used to say it is a one way street with no exit it is a permanent state it is irreversible then in the fourth chapter the lord also promises that he will come down to establish righteousness in 4-7 a very famous shloka yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharat abhyutthanam adharmasya tadatmanam srujamyaham dharma dharanat iti dharmah the one which integrates the one which unites the one which sustains harmonizes at individual level and at the society level dhruti dhruti means that which holds everything together at the individual level it is the integration at our thought level at our wor- words and deeds we need to make sure that our mind and intellect works in unison in adharma there is a difference in their thought in their word in their deed they say one thing they do another do not even think for a minute that adharma means somebody like a rakshasa with a bhakti with a bad hair do all this sakshara written backwards is rakshasa the one who is learned but crooked in his thinking is a modern day rakshasa they say one thing do another thing the head and the heart are not integrated the inherent thing of any object that is its swadharma like heat is the nature of fire same way being with our divine nature is dharma divinizing our action divinizing our emotion is our dharma following the laws of society following scriptural injunctions following social ethics and norms following these are our dharma when material prosperity is given more priority over spiritual unfoldment when we give less importance and reverence to scriptures and follow unrighteous path the lord says paritranay sadhunam vinashay ca duskrutam dharma samstapanarthay sambhavami yuge yuge the lord has promised that he will manifest himself to protect the good destroy the evil and establish righteousness dharma bhagwan says in whatever form they invoke me ye yatha mam prapadyante tam stataiva bajamyaham mam vartmanu vartante manushya partha sarvashah like electricity it is impartial you can plug in any device it provides the power to that device similarly the unmanifested eternal force can be invoked he will fulfill according to the type of invocation that we do 
then that leads us to the controversial topic, the caste system. Bhagavan in 4-13 says, Chatur Vardyam Maya Srushtam Gunakarma Vibhagashah Tasya Kartaram Apimam Vidya Kartaram Avyayam I want to clarify a few things. That's why I brought this shloka. Varna in Sanskrit means color. It can also mean name, color, form, quality, relationship, and many other things. Just like how we divide the plant kingdom, how we divide the animal kingdom and classify them, human beings, Lord says, are classified into four types. Chatur Varnyam Maya Srishtam. He very clearly states fourfold caste system created by me, Guna Karma Vibhagashah. Based on the gunas, their temperament and karma the Brahmana, the thinking class, who's predominantly Sattvic, with little Rajas and little Tamas. Then second category is Kshatriya, the leader class, mostly has Rajasic quality and less of Sattva. Vaishya has uh, the business class, less Sattva, less Rajas, more Tamas. Shudra has majority Tamas with little Rajas and minimum Sattva. So these are the four classification. He says, Chatur Varnyam, based on Guna and Karma. Our Puja Guruji always uses this example. Our society is like a cup of coffee with four ingredients, like the four casts, water, coffee powder, milk, sugar. For a good cup of coffee, each ingredient has special quality. We cannot say one ingredient is superior to the other. Even if you mix it a little, not proportionately, you can't get a good cup of coffee. So it has to be in equal proportion. Then Bhagavan says in 4-24, offering food. We, we use this while we offer the food. Brahmar, Panam, Brahma, Havihi, or consume food, a prayer before the meal. Brahmar Panam Brahma Havihi Brahmagna Brahmana Hutam Brahmai Vate Nagantavyam Brahma Karma Samadhina. We say this as our grace to make sure when we say Om Pranaya Swaha, Om Apanaya Swaha, Om Vyanaya Swaha, Om Udanaya Swaha. Om Samanaya Swaha. We make sure that the food we are consuming is providing the necessary sustenance through the physiological functions. A lot of teenagers ask me, Uncle, don't we have a grace prayer in our religion? This is our grace prayer. The offerer is divine. The offering is divine. The offer to is divine. The purpose, the whole purpose is divine. So the most important aspect of this mantra is even at the time of enjoyment to remember the Lord. Tera tujko arpan. I offer to you what is truly yours. That is the symbolic significance of that. A woodcutter, you know, on the lighter side, he was chopping a branch of a tree for long hours with a blunt axe obviously without much result. An onlooker asked him, hey, why don't you take a break? Sharpen your ax. He replied, can you not see? I am busy. I don't have time to sharpen the ax. Similarly, a lot of us have become like that. We have become human doings, not human beings. We have been working very hard. We are working hard without sharpening our mind and intellect, our subtle intellect. We need to empower our mind with spiritual practice and apply these skills we have learned in our daily living so that we develop our sukshma buddhi, the subtle intellect. Bhagavad Gita says, Tadvidya pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya. 
उपदेक्षंति ज्ञान ज्ञानी नस्तत्वदर्शि a similar theme is also expressed in mundaka upanishad and pariksha lokan sarvachitan brahmana nirveda mayat nastya krita krutena tadvignanartam sa guru meva bigacche samit pani shrotriyam brahmanishtam you approach a shrotriya brahmanishta guru surrender for higher knowledge in bhajagovindam also bhagavan adi shankaracharya says guru charanam buja nirmala bhakta with shraddha faith faith is something that is not blind belief it is belief pending enquiry by doing seva to the guru you learn this gnanam our puja gurudev always used to say shraddha is that logic based understanding faith is to believe in something that in the beginning you do not see but as a result of your shraddha you begin you begin to see what you believe श्रेयान द्रव्यमयाखिल पार्थ ज्ञाने परिसम्य फोर डैश थर्टी थ्री ऑल एक्शन विदउट एनी एक्सेप्शन अटेन देर कॉन्सुमेशन इन नॉलेज द स्पिरिचुअल जर्नी इज कंप्लीट इज इनकंप्लीट विदउट attainment of this self knowledge nahi gnane na sadrsham pavitram ih vidyate tat svayam yoga samsiddhah kale natmani vindati this culmination is the final culmination it's like that boat of self knowledge ज्ञानुनर्मोहमेशुन ज the doctrine of nishkama karma nishkama karma yoga this is a special contribution of bhagavad gita to the indian philosophical thought the yoga of desireless actions with allied concepts like swadharma loka sangraha these do your duties to benefit for all this is unique to bhagavad gita we also looked at how a man of realization lives in this world as a benchmark for our progress some leadership ideas the three gunas how to be efficient in our actions varnashrama dharma we looked at some important shlokas from the path of knowledge gnana marga the lord's promise that he will side with dharma and come down to protect with an exclusive feature of bhagavad gita of avatara expanding the idea of avatara from rigveda this is unique to bhagavad gita we also looked at as to how to approach a guru for higher knowledge and that knowledge of the self is the best purifier with that i conclude my session sorry i we ran over a couple of minutes over om purnamada purnamidam पूर्णा पूर्ण मुदच्य 
पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन प्लीज सेंड इट थ्रू आवर व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप्स एंड द अदर कम्युनिकेशन चैनल्स और इवन इन योर चैट सेशन हियर इन द जूम सेशंस थैंक यू फॉर लॉगिंग इन टुडे थैंक यू सो मच हरि ओम